Coding HTML emails for dark mode can be a real challenge. Microsoft Outlook for Windows is particularly hard to get right. If you've been having problems with Outlook for Windows messing with your text colors in dark mode, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Nicole Merlin from Email Wizardry, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix some of Outlook for Windows' worst behavior when it comes to adjusting your text colors for dark mode. First up, we'll look at how to fix unwanted color changes to simple colored areas of your emails. In the second part, we'll take a look at text color changes that are happening inside VML or vector markup language portions of your email, and we'll talk about what can be done to fix those. And if you're looking for more resources for your next email project, check out Envato Elements, where you can access millions of creative digital assets, including responsive email templates, beautiful stock imagery, and even more courses and tutorials. Subscribe now with the link in the description. Okay, so let's look at our first problem. I've got some large white text like this over a solid color here in my layout, and I've checked the color contrast. This combination is level AA compliant, so it's good to go. When I test it in dark mode, however, Windows Outlook barely adjusts the background color, but it's turning my text black. To fix this, we can actually use some special word CSS to apply a gradient effect to our text, which is displayed in light mode. It gets stripped off in dark mode and the fallback color is then adjusted for dark mode, just like any other colored text would be. This is great because it gives us two separate modes that we can control independently, one for light mode and one for dark mode. Let's dive into an example so you can see how this works. I'm going to find the text in my code that I need to keep white in dark mode, and I'm going to add a class to it called keep white. Remember, make sure this is the only class on the element since Outlook doesn't like multiple classes on things. If you've already got a class on the element, see if you can just use that or find some other way to target the element. Next, in the head of the email, add a conditional comment with a style block inside. This conditional comment targets MSO 16 and up. This targets Outlook 2016 and newer. We want to hide the code from older versions of Outlook because some of them, like 2007, don't display text gradients properly. Now it's time to obtain the gradient CSS code. You can actually generate this yourself from Microsoft Word. Create some text and then go up to the text color icon, go to more gradients, and then add a gradient like this. Make sure you set both ends of the gradient to be the same color. This should be the color you want in light mode. Now save the document as an HTML file. Open the HTML file in a text editor and scroll all the way to the bottom. We're looking for the text we just typed, which will be inside a paragraph tag that's going to have some CSS we can steal with our gradient information. We're going to be looking at taking these two parts, the MSO style text field type gradient, and then this, the MSO style text fill, fill gradient fill stop list, which has got the stop list for the colors in our gradient. Copy these. Now we can create our CSS rule. Write in the name of the class that you used, and now inside the rule, paste the CSS that you just copied from the gradient file. And finally, we just need to set our fallback color, but this is the tricky bit. This needs to be the hex code for the color that's going to turn into the color you want in dark mode. In dark mode, Outlook is going to strip away the gradient, but then treat the fallback color as it normally would any color in dark mode. So depending on your color, that might mean it's going to invert it, it might darken it, might completely flip it. This is easy for me because black text gets turned into white text in dark mode. So I can set my fallback here to be black and my text is going to come out white. And then we just need to add important to this rule to make sure we override the color that's on the element. It's trickier for colors, but you could send yourself some swatches to try and hit on the right shade. And that's it. Run a test and you'll see that your text is now displaying perfectly. So now let's talk about VML. When you have text over a VML color or image, the text will often be inverted in dark mode, but the background doesn't change, which can leave you with completely illegible text like this. So how can we fix this? Well, text inside a block of VML behaves differently to other text when it comes to color changes in dark mode. So unfortunately, the gradient trick we just looked at doesn't work in VML. And this is because of something very strange, which is that there seem to be two different dark mode algorithms running across different copies of Outlook. I've observed very different results between the version that Litmus uses for testing and the version basically everywhere else I've tested, including on my own PC. 
So when you use the MSO gradient trick inside a block of VML, some versions of Outlook will invert the fallback color and some are simply going to apply it as is, which is very annoying because one of those is always going to be the opposite of what you're trying to achieve. There's a similar discrepancy when using a popular trick for fixing text in Outlook's dark mode, which is to use MSO text fill fill color, similar to the gradient fill, but it just applies a solid fill color instead. Solid text fills do stay applied in dark mode. They don't get stripped off like the MSO gradient fills do. But when I ran a test on these text fill colors that you can see in these dots, the results were again different across different copies of Outlook. So on the left here, you can see the results I got in email on acid, testy, and my own Windows PC. In dark mode, the text fill colors are mostly darkened, although the grays at the bottom jump around a little bit. On the other hand, the same test in litmus here on the right showed a tendency towards a lightning. So just to reiterate, all this weirdness only applies to VML. These are VML fills, the black and white. So outside of VML, they all act the same and they all tend towards the darkening on the left. And the results for using black and white text fills are also pretty weird. When you use a solid black text fill on some text over the top of VML, all versions of Outlook in dark mode yield the same results. It all goes a sort of pale gray. But when you try out a solid white text fill over VML, on the left, as you can see, in email on Acid and everywhere else I tested, it gets turned black. Whereas in Litmus on the right, you can see it goes a sort of light gray. And while I have no actual explanation as to what's going on, at least we know for sure that MSO solid text fills and MSO gradient text fills don't provide a reliable way to solve dark mode problems in Outlook. The only other way you could get around this is to use positioning and Z index to layer your text content on top of your VML. So if that's viable for you, then the gradient trick that we showed in the first half of this video will work on your text. But that's not always possible. So if we can't do that, what can we do? So there is one tiny glimmer of hope, although it does require a little bit of flexibility in your email's background color in Outlook. But if you have that, there is one more Microsoft CSS property that we can use to our advantage in dark mode. Microsoft Office programs allow for the setting of an auto text color where the program itself has some ability to calculate whether the text should be black or white. It can be used inside VML to set a color that doesn't change between light mode and dark mode. Its calculation appears to be based on a combination of the body background color and the fill color of your VML shape. If you have a dark body background and a light VML shape, then color auto text resolves to black in both light and dark modes. Conversely, if you have a light body background and a dark shape, then color auto text resolves to white. So let's run through some examples to see how this trick operates. Say I have this layout with text over a VML background image. And as you can see now, without any fixes in dark mode, the text is turning black and illegible. I want the text to stay white in both light and dark mode. So as mentioned, a light body background will ensure that color auto resolves to white. So this is easy. My background is already white. Next, I just need to check my VML fill color. As mentioned, it needs to be dark, around 333, 333 or darker. My fill has a bit of color in it, but it's also darker than that, so it's good to go. So now all I need to do is set my text to be color auto for Outlook. And in fact, we can simply use the special MSO property of MSO color alt, which is going to override the CSS color property in Outlook only. So I just need to find my text and add MSO color alt auto. And that's it. Send a test and you'll see that your text is now displaying perfectly. Now let's look at a dark example. On this one, I need the text to remain black because at the moment it's inverting to white in dark mode and you can't actually read it. So the tipping point to ensure that color auto resolves to black is to make sure that your body background is 444, 444 or darker. So I'm going to change my body background to 444, 444. If you didn't want this to be applied for every client, you could add it in some conditional CSS in the head. So now I need to check my VML fill. As we saw earlier, the VML should have enough contrast, so it needs to be around 555, 555 or lighter. So I'll set mine here to be white. So once I've done that, then I can find my text that is already dark and add MSO Color Alt Auto. And that's it. Now this one is fixed as well. Thanks for watching and hopefully this information will save you a little bit of time on your next email project. I'm Nicole Millen and this has been for Envato Tuts Plus. If you'd like more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe.